Today on Gamer's Couch. Exit the game, not the video. In this case, the secret lab exit. The card game? Secret Labrador. No, it's the secret laboratory. <laughs> he's, sure. a, he's in a funny mood. It's I Saturday know. morning. We are I recording. Have to go. It's exit. Pun intended? Not intended? Uh, no, that's that's uh, that's approximately the length of this uh, talk about the game, probably. Oh. So it's one of those weeks where he again screws up my intro, but he didn't do it in a while, so I'm not mad at him. Welcome to Gamers Couch. My name is Sarah. I'm the artist behind Pinsel Geschichten and owner of this channel. And this wonderful man next to me is my husband, Daniel, who's just as fond of board games as I am. So, hey, we decided to make a video podcast every Sunday to uh, share our collection with you and share some very important thoughts and gameplay and... Uh, the, the most important thoughts. Of course. So, all the important uh, opinions in this house are shared with the world via this camera and the invention of internet. And so thought leadership. Yes, area. totally. Totally. So, it's, it's even hurting just saying that. Why did you then? Why? We go... I just wanted to exit my brain. <laughs> Oh, do you want me to have a cards. do you want me to have a counter how often we can say exit in this video? I please say no. I I don't want to do extra edit word work editing work. What are you doing? I, I was just con confused because this uh, said uh, had text on it and I was <laughs> it had text on it so it confused him. I was I Cthulhu, anybody? I, I wasn't sure if we hadn't set up the card the wrong way. But well, you, not we, you. I didn't set up <sighs> this time around. I, I made the coffee. I did the important things. But let's uh, start the real talk. Now, we are going to talk about Exit, which is one of the nominees of the Spieler, uh, Spieler des Jahres. Hmm? Spiel, Spiel des Jahres. Gamers Jahr. of the Year, Exit. Yeah. <laughs> No. Bye. This, so the, so this this today starts off really strong with some. Let me cool my brain and try let again. Me, wait, wait. Let, we are we are kind of disrupting the video space, are we? Mm -hmm. So we are going to talk about exit, as it is a nominee on the Spiel des Jahres list, and uh, well, it's time to talk about those games. And uh, we're going about it with the usual manner, uh, rules and gameplay first, then likes and dislikes with a tiny little bit of a thumb rating and funny stories and experiences. If you want to hop to a certain section, there is a timestamp in the description box so you can check that out. There is not a teaser for Draw for Initiative this week. That's going to be in the next video again. My love, while Quick. I've... Quick heads up for the Spiel des Jahres. We already talked about some of them. Um, we talked, for example, about uh, for the Kennerspiel uh, Terraforming Mars. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually talked about the uh, Kinderspiel Ice Cool, and I think you want to. I'm I'm sorry. I'm hot. I, I, I... <laughs> try to. No, I can't. Audio recording. <laughs> Either I'm melting and I'm super angry, or I'm a decent human being, and there's once in a while a tap tap on the audio that I can You're not green. dial down. You're not green yet. <laughs> Any I'm green on the inside. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is one of them. Um, unfortunately, this game is a very specific case of game similar to stuff like Time Stories. Um, or uh, the um, escape room game we already talked about. Uh, Link is in the eye card. This is very hard to explain without spoiling anything. We will try. I Fair warning. If you want to know what we think about this, uh, I think uh, the short version is we like this. We like the puzzles. They can go. They can hop to the likes section. Yeah, but then we might also want to talk about. Oh, some... you want to have the super short, absolutely spoiler free, yeah, without yeah. me the, bleeping the, anything, blurring anything. If you, if you just want to know anything, what we think, you can watch this and get out of here. Buy it. And and that that would be. Um, I think we like this. 
the the puzzles are more challenging than the escape room stargazer manner uh, uh, game although the story bits in this are way lighter um so this is way more about puzzles but we found the puzzles are more challenging in in this and that's what make it, mm -hmm. made it a little bit more interesting for us we still sense. try to be very spoiler free and I'm going to do the work of bleeping and blurring things that are spoilery in case I come across something while editing so you sh uh, and there will be a spoiler warning on screen so you should be safe to watch either way so we try we I have the I have the force of me. making you <laughs> I would never so but yeah let's let's start rules and gameplay yeah, uh, in in fact, the the game itself says um, only start reading the rules when you want to play the game. So that's how short it is. Although that wouldn't help you a lot if you want to know at least a little bit of how this works out. Um, so what we set up here is actually what the game looks like set up for the very first round. You read some of the intro bits uh, all together and then you start a timer because at the end of the game, uh, that timer tells you how good you did, how um, depending on how many hints you needed to progress. And yes, this is a cooperative game. Uh, and the story roughly is uh, you are all um, kind of closed in a laboratory and you need to escape. Big surprise. In order to do so, you need to solve a couple of puzzles. Um, you start out uh, pretty much just with what you see here, some some weird parts, and I actually call it like weird bits. Um, this um, wheel that lets you uh, decipher stuff, and that is actually your uh, main uh, main way of progressing in in this game. You get a, um, a booklet that has some clues and sometimes puzzles. Um, essentially, this is the the core thing you will work with trying to to get out. And uh, while reading this, you get started on your breadcrumby tail um, where you will draw some of these uh, cards that uh, give you something to work with. They can be, um, well, hints or pieces of puzzles uh, that you need to, to assemble. Um, every puzzle in this game or every challenge has an, uh, a symbol associated with it. And looking closely on these cards here, uh, you see all the symbols. So you could say roughly there's 10, um, this is kind of um, an extra helping card, um, but there's like 10 bigger challenges in this game you need to overcome. And if you ever get stuck, you can read these cards. You get a, a first hint, a second hint, uh, and then uh, or the resolution or the solution if you don't uh, if you're really stuck and don't know how, how to progress um, and uh, the way that roughly works let me show you at least one or two pages out of this the one that um, I'm not spoiling so I'm, so I'm, I'm really short um, uh, this is like the the room you start in uh, you see a bunch of stuff that won't tell you anything but there's a, a, a riddle card on here that says oh and that would be then your starting point and from there on you uh, try to go forward um and while you're trying to solve those riddles uh let's say uh, uh we are currently stuck on this uh crescent moon uh, riddle um you always, what you want to do is uh, try to associate three of these colored icons to the riddle symbol. So these uh, symbols uh, that you need are all um, on the on the outside of this uh, wheel. And while trying to solve the riddle, you're getting clues that will give you an idea what type of um, uh, uh, color combination is required here. So then you do that. Um, you arrange the entire thing and then there's a little window here that will tell you a number uh, and uh, the way that works is you would then go through this uh, uh, solution card stack and uh, let me take a look at the number two which I just dialed there and um, it seems that I was wrong with that. Uh, there are some cards that will straight out tell you that you are wrong, but there are other cards, and let me just uh, blindly take take one to give you an, an idea of how this might look. Um, 
so I'm while I'm not showing you which car, card it is. So there's um, something like this on here, uh, which shows you uh, different parts of uh, the room you're working with. And um, e eventually uh, what you have to do is uh, you have to associate um, the the symbol that you're trying to solve. You, you can see there's these symbols show up here and you have then to, uh, uh, or the, the card says, Hmm, that symbol you're trying to solve, on which piece in this scenery have you seen that symbol? And then you get the next uh, solution card and that will actually uh, tell you if you work. Uh, that's a very convoluted way of uh, telling you um, you don't get uh, accidentally uh, clues or solutions. Uh, this is a kind of system that uh, tries to um, have you be really sure about what, what you're doing and uh, prevent you from accidentally spoiling you while playing the game by turning over the a card that is way more advanced or might give you a clue that you shouldn't have, have gotten. Um, and that's pretty much it rules and gameplay wise. There's no strict separation of who does what. Um, I can tell you, you will um, effectively probably uh, work on one riddle at a time, uh, even though you might gain clues and stuff for multiple riddles, uh, which might be important uh, if you're playing with multiple uh, players. Um, there's um, Unlike with um, the Escape Room Stargazer Manor game, uh, there we uh, they had puzzles where the group could split up and one part takes this puzzle and the, the other one takes that riddle. Um, here it's more of a riddle linear experience, if, if that is <laughs> That's a, a nice word. If, if that, riddle linear. If that, that is a way of, of telling it. Uh, but step by step. As I said, since uh, at least we felt that the, the challenges here are a little bit higher, um, um, it's actually more beneficial to have everybody look at the same stuff at the same time and then come up with a solution. That. And that leads us into likes and dislikes. Do you I, want to keep going? I think I... Do you think no, that's can the right you, thing? Yeah, uh, definitely. Can you please say... Um, the time it says on the box and the age and the people. I think it was one to eight players. Well, it's one to six players. Oh, sorry, one to six. Um, for ages 12 and up. And this says 40, 40, uh, five to 90 minutes. Although, um, looking at the... Uh, um, Manual. Looking at the scoring table uh, at the end of the game. Uh, so you, you get a little table that tells you how, how good you did on a scale of 1 to 10. And uh, that depends on how long you take. And uh, this goes uh, if you needed more than 90 minutes. Uh, if you uh, required more than uh, 10 of these uh, uh, hint cards uh, to, to progress. Okay. Um Another thing that you have to tell me so that I can kick off my likes and dislikes is how much did it cost? Do I remember correctly? 12 euros? Yeah, I think 12.99 or 11.99, something like okay. that. It's, um, and it, just to be very clear, this is a game you can only play once. Uh, in fact, the box straight says out so. says so if yeah. you look at the back, back of the box. So if, you, if you're playing this... Um, Similar to what we already said to the escape room, you want to make sure that you have like five or six people there so that you get the most bang for your buck, so so to speak. Um, and um, you might view this as uh, akin to uh, having a night at the movies or something like that. You take away what I want to say. We're so in sync. Um, I was about to say, compare it to a movie ticket yeah. uh, and popcorn and Coke or whatever you have at the movies. If it's more than 11 euros or 12 euros 99 for six people, well, this is very much uh, worth what comes in the box. And this goes for at least 90 to maybe 120 mm -hmm. minutes, depending on how many people... How funny they are and stuff like that. So how, how clever you are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, I, I would say this this feels more like um, the version for adults, whereas uh, the escape room game was, was the more kids the one. kids version. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, and uh, I, since we are only playing this once anyway, and I don't mind. I that will make much, art with those cards. Um, yeah, you you cannot really. 
give away the game to someone else afterwards because you will be modifying parts and yeah. you know, bits uh, of the game that uh, probably it's, le- it, it's will legacy ev- effectively ruin the game for for some someone else. Yeah. Um, Exit is a legacy game, mm. pretty much. You you change. Th- Things yeah, but forever. Can, but it's a non non get, replayable legacy game. So correct. So. Well, the, it's it's the it's a permadeath. <laughs> That's a nice one. <laughs> I like that. But yeah, it. I think it's very much worth to. I mean, huh, let's let's um, start differently. So uh, I know that there's people out there who cannot see the benefit of buying a board game that you can only play once or that you will change forever like legacy games or like uh, escape the rooms exit whatever they are called in my personal opinion um they're very well worth it especially the one time playing puzzle mystery exit or escape the room kind of games because well i do not compare them to board games per se but more to um like an event almost there's also um uh like locations where you can go to and you're in a real room and you have to try to escape by uh um solving puzzles so it's pretty much the same thing and therefore if it's a reasonable price i say go for it it's a it's a lot of fun and if you have an engaging couple of people with you It's a perfect way to either have a family birthday or a birthday party, I mean, or um, like, I don't know, a public holiday or something where you get together with a couple of people, you're all in a good mood, you might have something nice to eat or drink with you, and it's only adults and you play this game and you're just having fun. And I have to say the the riddles were quite challenging yeah. sometimes. We really had to well work with this gray matter in our head. But but speaking of party, this game doesn't try to go um in a in a direction where you have a thematic evening and then tr- all try to no. escape from the laboratory. This is a lot more abstract. Um, yes, it gives you some some beats that uh, give you an idea of where you are and what you're supposed to do. Um, but there's by far not as uh, uh, thematic components in here than um, there was with uh, the Stargazer Manor. There's no, you don't you don't feel like these are the pieces you are actually working with mm-hmm. to solving the puzzle. It's more it's like more abstract. Here's here's a card describing what you're doing, and you yeah. have to bring your imagination to to that, yeah. which is. Fine, totally. I, 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 I would say this is more mathematic and geometry, and the Stargazer was more um, thematic, and thematic, three D story yeah. puzzling, that kind of thing. It's a different way of approach. If you know those um, logic puzzles uh, where you pretty much solve puzzles with only answering yes and no. Uh, questions in your head and then you get a completed picture or whatever mm-hmm. it's very it feels very much like that which is well right up my alley i love those puzzles but this is uh, this is way more yeah mathematic feeling it's not very story heavy or component heavy um but nonetheless um i i am with you uh, definitely, I, what you said in the beginning, I do love those puzzles uh, way more than I did the Escape the Rooms. But uh, then again, it is meant for adults. It's The, the um, Escape the Room was maybe aimed for the kids a bit more. And this one is definitely aimed for, let's say, older than 12 years people, I'd say. Well, well the box says 12. But... Yeah, but I would even say... Adults, not necessarily no, teenagers. No, I think teenagers is no. The, yeah, but it it targets the. Uh, I I would say sixteen plus people. They are the target group for the way the puzzles are done. It it reminds me a lot of things that I learned in the last let's say four years of school life. So that would be in fourteen to eighteen. That stuff that we I'm, had then in school, not the stuff that I'm, we had I'm, before. I'm not sure that I had any of this year really? in school, but uh, I I think twelve is the laboratory is thing. Didn't remind fine. you of 
uh, things you like experiments or something you did in class earlier mm. in school? No, not necessarily. No, not that? for solving the puzzle. There wasn't anything important. Or like with the. Uh, I'm uh, remind me later once this video is done. I'm going to tell you what it what part reminded me of a school lesson mm -hmm. that we had experiments with. Anyway, uh, so but yeah, yeah I, but I had I had these uh, riddle books as a kid where you have to solve some some of these uh, things, and so that's where mm -hmm. I think twelve twelve is fine. There might be some some uh, uh, puzzles that are a little bit difficult at at that point. Um, Although I have to say the difficulty of the puzzles here comes more through obscurity than um, Logic. kind of execution of mm. uh, the the how to how to solve the the entire thing. Yeah. It is for most of them the thing we stumbled uh, upon the most was the okay I don't know how to approach this uh, thing. And that might yeah. be, especially for the first couple uh, of, of things, once you get into that, it's uh, weird, weirdly enough, and that is not a really good comparison, but it, it reminds me of a of quite recent uh, a video puzzle game called The Witness, where the game teaches you how to solve the puzzles by giving you, starting out with simple puzzles and then building upon them and making oh, them okay. even more elaborate, but still combining those things you learned by uh, figuring out the earlier puzzles. And the game does this to some extent, because the, you will come across certain things which... Um, You you know what you're looking for, so to speak, then in the mm -hmm. puzzles, and that will help mm -hmm. help you in yeah, you get uh, into in, the in solving them and the groove. Of even the even though it would be way too obscure if that would have been your first puzzle. So I I like the the ramping up, mm -hmm. and in fact I think that that gives you that feeling of have being really accomplishment, and, yeah, uh, and satisfaction definitely. I was, so there were endorphins uh, all over my body once we had finished the game. Uh, there is one downside that I have, but that is very easy, easy redeemable. So depending on how many players you have, um, you might want to think about copying uh, the booklet that comes with the game if you're more than I'd say three players we played with a full uh, f no we played with five we didn't play with six we played with five players and we uh, well we had some downtime because not everybody could look at something and already think and stuff so it slowed us down for one And it kind of... Um, it's a bit annoying if you have yeah. people at the table waiting for other people to I, I don't want to say you zone out or you disengage, but it's kind of like when you're... Um, like two people are always looking at um, the booklet and the booklet goes around the table. Um, of course, you hear ideas already of the other players who how to approach solving this or what they think, which is I liked a lot, just listening to the other people and then um, not coming maybe up with an idea like uh, from scratch, but building upon other players' ideas and then yeah. just push it forward. But it was a bit I, well difficult to just work with one booklet, so make copies. So, yeah, I... I think what I would have liked is this not being a booklet, but individual pages, so yeah. that you can, can hand spread them. them I mean, you can you can cut yeah. those up and and hand them out. Yeah, just just take maybe, the maybe, staples maybe, out. Maybe not, because there might be some some things that uh, are hmm. uh, important uh, to be on both sides. Um, in, in fact, but I think yes, uh, having two of these would be. Um, very beneficial for more i think you're totally fine if you're just playing with two people or maybe three that's what you just yeah. need one booklet it's fine you can but group some, in a way that not everybody goes like that and cranks their neck but still everybody can yeah, see but, and work but it's 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 some sometimes the uh, uh the point where someone has one idea and tries to follow up on on that puzzle and someone else has another idea and you are not quite sure yet what of the information from this is the thing you need to solve it um so you sometimes also will be flipping pages mm -hmm. back and forth to compare things and and do that and it would just 
make things a little bit easier yeah. for, for that with without everybody else waiting and i totally get the you are you disengage it's like okay i don't yeah you to, might forget your idea or you, you have to write it yeah, down quickly yeah. or it's or you have to disrupt the other person while they are trying to figure something out yeah. and going along their idea so it's it's ju it just takes you longer it, it might be even depending on your group getting to the point that uh, some people like i said disengage at all like are gone and just like sit there uh-huh uh-huh or maybe some people get annoyed or maybe a bit aggressive it depends because everybody wants to help and well play the game and solve the puzzles of course i mean everybody wants to know oh hmm, how how does it go right how how do we solve this so just to be aware and uh well let you let you know if you have a bigger group make make copies it's it's a very easy way to redeem this and i think yeah i i think that is something that i might i would like to see if there's um if, i mean there's already a bunch of of these and uh, this i very sure that we I mean, this we can, will not can, be the last one we, that i was we about to say we can do the quick rating and yeah one two three i uh th thumbs up um i'm I'm. I won't say anything about Spiel des Jahres if I no. see this as. Um, uh, we uh, haven't the, talked about all of the ones yeah. in a group. We usually do that with the last but, game in the group. Uh, for a one-shot uh, puzzle escape game, I think you know, this is very good. This yeah. is good. Uh, in fact, when I saw this first, I was like, uh, "This doesn't seem really interesting." Uh, and, uh, if this hadn't been nominated for Spiel des Jahres, we probably wouldn't have played it at all. Was that because of our Escape the Room uh, experience, or hadn't we played that yet? We, when we you had, saw we it? had played the the uh, Escape the Room game, uh, and then I saw a preview of this, mm. and it was like. Yeah, you only have a bunch of cards, and that seems oh, that, that seemed was, really oh, okay. boring uh, to. Okay. To, um, have you seen any of the other parts? What well, did you know yeah, about that's them? Still, this is no, no. I mean, I'm I'm asking because yeah, I don't I, know I've what seen, you saw. I have seen everything everybody else sees here as well, mm. and that seemed boring. But what I didn't take into account is how how challenging the puzzles might mm. might be, or if they and are how fun. in the in the in the right ballpark for, mm -hmm. for for us and uh, that's also really difficult to to convey um, and it might be that if you're interested in, in playing this that this isn't for you at all and that you would like to have something else uh, um, as I said I if this if the puzzles in here would have been as light as in uh, the Stargazer Manor, uh, I would have been mm. very disappointed because yes. that would then be very abstract and not <laughs> challenging enough to uh -huh. uh, to capture my, my interest. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, what I really now would like to see is a game that does both, being uh, very uh, uh, being challenging and having little props in there and, and things that well, make it more Well, if you if thematic. you're a game designer, get on it. I do I, it. That being said, you would make us very happy. I, under, I totally understand why you wouldn't do that because yeah. there's a lot of production costs. Exactly. In there. And uh, I mean, I remember when we talked about the Stargazer I and mean, we said that we were surprised how high the production costs of exactly. That is. But that's also a game that you could, in theory, give to someone else and replay. Exactly, exactly. Well, with this one, you can really play it once. Um, what I'm going to do and what I would suggest to you is uh, if you play this and have, well, of course, bought it, played it, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do artwork with uh, the cards. I have to show the back. So I'm going to use them as uh, a surface. I'm going to have white paint on them and then draw on them or use them for example for my random act of kindness uh, project so I'm, I'm collecting gaming cards and gaming pieces so that i do artwork with them if we have games that we can only play once or if there's a reprint of something and uh, we don't throw away those old pieces i do artwork with them and i think if you have uh, maybe if you're not into the artsy or the crafty way yourself maybe you have kids who want to use them in their crafty artsy process thing so you can you can repurpose uh, that stuff also 
you could you can finish this game without destroying or modifying anything yes. but then you have to copy some exactly some and then you can give it away to somebody else and uh, they can play it that's another that's another way yeah. to to play this yeah, I, I mean, uh, the, the good part about this with the cards is you don't have any envelopes that you rip open to exactly. reveal stuff. Uh, uh, that's, uh, as I said, I actually really like the... Um, this uh, uh the using, using this these solution cards that yeah. have a two check kind of or two stage check uh, exactly. to see if you're if you are correct yeah so that so that you can't really cheat and you cannot be ex accidentally spoiled i i really like this this concept mm -hmm. of um doing a check so shall we hop into the last section funny stories experiences how we already mentioned I'm got, but we already yeah, yeah, i'm, I'm, there, I'm having one ahead. very very um uh little story so uh we used three clues in total and there was one puzzle where we had to use both clues on it and we were kind of frustrated after that because it was actually just confirmation of what we thought was the right solution but we were not really sure and there were so many great ideas at the table on how to solve this thing and stuff so we said ah oh, come on we just we just have one clue um use we can take another clue it's fine we're still good you know prepping uh prep talk to ourselves and uh, yeah, that that was the one thing was that ah, we should have trusted in ourselves. We were really um, uh, on on the right path. But uh, there were puzzles there where we really it took us maybe fifteen minutes to come up with an idea on. And then once you're at the start of that path, it went like woo, and we went down to the solution. It it, it just took us way longer to get to. Like you said in the beginning, like where to start with this, and not uh, fill out the but that, details. But that that was also uh, related to, in, especially in let's say the first half hour, forty five minutes, you don't necessarily know what clues relate to what mm -hmm. puzzle. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we we struggled a bit with that, that at the beginning too. For yeah. some, it's it's clear, and for some, it's okay. It, it could be this. This or looks like that, that. Um, yeah. and um, then you find out, and mm -hmm. maybe and you're not. like, oh, yeah. yeah, we were on the right track. But yeah, we we used uh, three clues. I remember that, and I remember that. Um, oh, oh, <laughs> sorry, that was my stomach crawling. I guess I'm hungry. Um, it, and it was like uh, we were kind of moving around the table because people, uh, well, the, the booklet thing, you know, two mm. people looking and then oh, I'm, I'm getting around, I'm looking behind just like, hmm, and people cranking the necks and how does this and tra -la -la. So that was German, by the way, for la la la. And uh, that was uh, very funny to see how the group pretty much moved around the table like, like a wave or something, a very slow wave. But that was fun, and I liked a lot that everybody, though we had the downtime, still um, did their best to be very engaged in listening to the other people's ideas and brainstorming and stuff, so not zoning out too much. So that that was a very, very nice afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that are all the wise words I have. Shall we wrap up? Yep. All right. We're going to see you next week with a new game. Do you already want to tease it? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, it's, uh, it's gonna be... probably clear, but we will now go through the Spiel des Jahres nominees and give you our thoughts. Um, Same goes for Can I Spiel. The ones that we haven't yes. already talked and, about. Of and course. the ones that we can get, because some don't seem are either not released yet or not available. Uh, so... We try to, to go through them to, to give you an idea of what we think about them and um, then we will just go back to our regular schedule of just talking about games uh, we like anyway. Yeah, and uh, we're going to see you next Sunday 2 p.m. CET on this channel if you're interested. If you want to know about 
things that I do with the items, uh, you can check out the Monday show, art, Monday show Art Day, where I do all the different kinds of things of artwork on this channel. And once in a while, like <clears throat> every month, I use up some gaming pieces to do artwork. And there's also Draw for Initiative on this channel, which I mentioned earlier, which is a show where Tina and I, so co-producer and very dear friend Tina and I, paint scenes from board games and um, well have you watch along and on Thursdays on Beyond the Lines I talk about color all about the colors while I show you how I mix things and how I do things so if you're artsy too or you want to venture into that realm of the YouTubes you can see all the other shows on the channel and uh, if not well that's fine too so your draft initiative for exit will probably be something like uh, one of us being the sole survivor. Oh everybody, <laughs> everybody else is dead because we were all fighting over that one the booklet. booklet. <laughs> that would be a nice painting. <laughs> well, we haven't put it on the list yet because we we uh, have just started mm -hmm. a this new is, season. It might be on is, this season about, seven. This is about exiting the room, not kind of who exiting who, life who gets who gets the booklet well you will we, we will see if we can if we will put it up onto season seven later but for now we're gonna go we're gonna see you do all the good youtube youtube stuff like share subscribe if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section below fill it with wonderful words visit us on board game geek we do have geek lists there and chat with you there as well um, and otherwise, all the social medias are in the description box. You can check them out. Take good care. Have a wonderful Sunday. Goodbye. If you have a public holiday on Monday, enjoy that too. Because it's Wit Monday. After this Wit Sunday. <laughs> I shouldn't sing. Goodbye, folks. Take I, care. I already said goodbye. Yeah, yeah. They're already gone. Did you exit? No, you're here. I can see you. You didn't exit. Say goodbye. Now. No. <laughs> Not this way. Be nice. I Say said, another bye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Why do I always have to push you to be nice? <laughs>